Today, I will give you four reasons to pull for Kokomi. Let's get started. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe, as this is the best way to support my content. Reason 1. Kokomi is extremely versatile and can fill multiple roles. She enables you to choose how to build her and offer something new. Flexibility. She is a 3-in-1 deal. She can be an off-field Hydro Applicator for Pyro teams, or a Damage Buffer for Cryo teams, or a 10-second DPS for Electro Charge slash Reverse Fate teams, all depending on how you build her. Unlike most characters, her artifacts actually change her role and her gameplay. Perhaps you've heard the saying, a jack of all trades is a master of none. In recent times, it's come to be meant as an insult toward generalists, suggesting being a specialist is somehow better. But here's a fun fact. The full saying is, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. The origin of the phrase was actually a compliment. So let's talk about Kokomi's multi-dimensional capability versus master of one hydro characters. Off-field hydro application. As we all know, Singcho dominates off-field hydro application for pyro teams. He provides single target, fast, mobile hydro application, damage mitigation, resistance to interruption, and minor healing. This lasts for 15 seconds. Truly worthy to be called a six star character if you have Sacrificial Sword. Kakomi can be an off-field Hydro Applicator as well. By giving her Sacrificial Fragments, she provides up to 36 seconds of AOE Hydro Application as well as healing. She certainly provides less damage than Sing Cho, but if you run a Pyro main carry, Vaporize will get the job done. But maybe you want to play her as a damage amplifier instead. This is where Mona has set up shop. She provides a 5 second damage bonus that can last even longer if the enemy is frozen and has access to Thrilling Tails. Kokomi can do this as well. With Thrilling Tails and a 4 piece tenacity set, Kokomi will provide a 70% attack buff to your main DPS, which is only 10% less than an R5 Wolf Gravestone. And Wolf only activates on enemies less than 30% HP. Thrilling Tales does not have that restriction. But what if you want to play here as your main DPS? Child is a great main DPS on field enabler. He can do reverse vape with Shangling or fireworks with Beidou. Kakomi can do this too. Slap on a prototype Amber, two piece Heart of Death, two piece Maidens, and you've got yourself a 10 second main DPS on field healing enabler. Sacrificial Sword Sing Cho provides more damage than Kakomi as a sub DPS. Mona provides a fat damage multiplier on your attacks as a burst support, and full crit AoE Child is a force of nature. But all of them are one dimensional. It's difficult for Sing Cho to perform both good physical and hydro damage, thus solidifying him as a sub DPS. Mona's auto attack multipliers are the worst in the game, preventing her from being a great main DPS, and Child must take field time, preventing him from being an off-field support. Kokomi is not one-dimensional. Since she doesn't have to worry about crit stats, it's actually not that difficult to change builds. She offers something rare. Actual flexibility. One of my biggest regrets is triple crowning Hu Tao. So many resources used on a character who can only main DPS. If Hu Tao is on the team, she must be the focus. She sucks up all the attention. A character like Ayaka, on the other hand, transitioned to a melt support for my Yanfei. I just like Yanfei more. But Ayaka can sub DPS or main DPS, meaning that I didn't race my resources on her if I choose to not main DPS with her. My Triple Crown Hu Tao has negative flexibility. She actually restricts my team more. Kakomi has that flexibility. Reason 2. How is she so cute? Reason 3. The meta has the potential to shift toward healing in the future. Abyss is adding a poison effect, and rumor on the street is certain new enemies will start ignoring shields. Reason 4. 
You will be the most sought after and respected co-op player ever. Gene, Bennett, and Diona cannot outheal Ajdaha phase change damage. I would know. I main healers. Gene is literally gated by cooldown. It doesn't matter how much energy, recharge, and attack you have. She can't heal fast enough because of cooldown. She also can't space out her healing like Chi Chi can. She has one mass heal alt. I'm an expert in playing Jean and Chi Chi in co-op against Ajdaha. It's all I do. Co-op is an aspect in Genshin as well, and Kakomi has that on lockdown. Don't let a small but loud subset of the Genshin community who likes to complete Abyss as fast as possible make the decision for you. Don't let Spiral Abyss, content that resets twice a month, that will only take you one hour to do with meta characters for 600 primo gems, less than four wishes, stop you from getting a character you want. I don't recommend spending money on the game, but if you want her, get yourself a Kakomi.